All right, so welcome to the risk meeting on Thursday, April 29th, 2021. Hello, Sophie, welcome. Hello. We were just getting started. So you missed nothing, or I guess you missed the banter prior to the actual oh, meeting. I do like good banter. Yeah, the, ban the banter was pretty decent. Uh, it was all me talking, I think. Um, <laughs> My only, only um, personal take on that is for some reason I've been hearing more like phantom music and I don't know how much of it is like my mind wants to hear music but I'm okay. not or I live close enough to Lincoln Center that people could just be playing music outside. Okay now I'm I'm hearing phantom music too like a lot and it's like when I'm not on a call a lot of times I, unless I'm writing I, I, a lot of work I do I can I do it listening to music, like especially the technical work. And so like, I, I was like, am I, if I just been listening to so much more music during the pandemic that I have this, this problem that I'm hearing ghost music or, <laughs> or is this a thing? Is, is this like an affliction? Is it a psyop? Is, is like QAnon running around my neighborhood with like boom boxes trying to freak me out? Um, <laughs> That's a good prank. It's just yeah. so playing music outside of people's houses. Yeah. My, my personal affliction was that I listened to the Genesis song, Abacab, which you may or may not recall or know about, but it's very addictive. It's like an earworm. And I, it's, it was in my head for two days after I heard it. Um, <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't go, I couldn't go anywhere without being triggered to hear Abacab. So I'm not sure my first, but I know Dwayne, oh, David, you're here. Perfect. All right. So, uh -oh. so, so here, so here's the, um, I was talking to Wayne O'Brien at Indeed about, we were like, okay, what is the minimum viable tool that we could build that would show open source people the Libyers for their repos? And so I found a, I found a couple of repositories that read requirements.txt files um, and produce Libyers. Okay, let's I have, Python then. Yeah, well, so what I was, expecting or hoping to find was an open source tool that would uh, scan multiple languages for their various types of dependencies and how they could be embedded. Um, you know, Dwayne and I both thought, well, surely somebody has done that before. Um, and we thought maybe we misunderstood some of what you were trying to explain about the existing tool sets, or maybe what we were at, we weren't asking the question clear enough about what kind of tools we desire. Right. My under okay. I I did do this. I did do this search before. That mm -hmm. does not mean that I know all things. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, caveat at this. The point. omniscient David Wheeler. The omniscient <coughs> David Wheeler uh, was God. apparently not here today. Perhaps tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Omnipotent. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, but the ones that I found were specific to specific language sets. So if you were going to do it for multiple language sets, what you have to do is install and run multiple tools. One that tells you about the, about the totals for Ruby, one for the totals of Python, one for the totals of JavaScript. That's not great. On the other hand, as long as they don't overlap. It's like Node and JavaScript. Result. Yeah, like Node and JavaScript surely would. Right, like if I took- Well, yeah, Node, no, no, I, I, I'm- almost using those interchangeably so <laughs> node slash javascript right so um yeah so i i think if you want to summarize it across multiple ecosystems sounds like a good idea yeah uh, right now well yeah i don't i don't think there's well you know what i mean we can go look at this at uh, look I, at this up. I, but i like think you, right now you have to run multiple tools so that's that's okay um we can search for multiple tools. We can search like Libya, Ruby, Libya, Python, Libya, JavaScript. Yeah, and then um, add them all up and then get yeah. them from there. If you, you had a, to, if you had a list of tools that you'd found before though, we would, we would welcome that. Well, don't, don't be too impressed. Um, <laughs> I, my, all, I, if you found I more than one. Oh yeah, I found have, more you than have, one. You have 100% but... more than we've discovered. Oh, well. With, without frankly looking super hard because what we found wasn't what we expected to find. Okay, well, how we expected this, this magic multilingual tool. All right, like so Google so Translate. What you want to do is go to that web page and look on the right hand side. Oh, you probably put it in chat. Yes, I did. Okay, and when I'm sharing, I have to like 
go through special hoops. To find oh, chat. special things. You know, I and you know what? I should probably go to the meeting minutes and like oh, I could add that. That's still in there. Okay. I probably Here could add my name too. What are, oh yeah. Well, so I'm just, okay. You've given us this link before, and right yes, there on the right there on, right on the right. Right. Yeah. Now for Python, there's two different tools. Of Whoops, course there. No, I hit one just because I wanted to see. Okay. That's fine. So for Python, of course, there's two different tools. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Python, there's supposed to be one uh, one way to do it. Yeah. If it was Perl, there should be 12 different tools. Yeah. If it's R, there are 18 libraries that do the same thing. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. No, I'm not. Right. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, let's see here. On right hand side, yeah. they give. Yep. a list of tools and a few others like they have uh, C sharp which i don't use very much but no um you know, Microsoft... if you use it i mean there's a lot of coding it and you know it makes sense to analyze it if you got it i was at, I was at a conference in 2008 where microsoft was handing out t-shirts that said hell froze over microsoft open source and it was the beginning of <laughs> <laughs> some of their open source i mean they, this is microsoft giving these away so yep. i think I, I don't feel like i'm doing anything amiss by sharing that story Okay, that 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 brings us that grounds the discussion that Dwayne and I were having then. Because yeah. we're so, like, okay, we we didn't we missed some piece, and this is the piece we missed is this these tools on the right hand side. Yeah, the only uh, hmm. approach, you know, uh, the tools are ecosystem specific. Yep. So uh, so to do totals across ecosystems oh i'm trying to you need run you. many tools uh you need to run many tools yeah yeah <laughs> but I've, I've i've done like uh when i find a tool i don't rewrite it like it like we count labor hours and um total lines of code and language distribution in auger using a go tool you know we just wrap it in python and call it from python yeah, um, that's perfect and fine. and i think we would from a tooling perspective, just do the same thing here. Okay, somebody's built these tools and we'll go through and run each of them for our, each repo and gather some of that data so that we can start looking at. Okay, that is where, that is what Dwayne and I um, wanted to clarify. Okay. Thank you. I, I've so seen I, a couple where it's blended in a bigger tool. Okay. I haven't seen ones that are open source yet. I might know uh, that might be coming. Um, but it's from where <laughs> it's recorded. So I'm not going to say, yeah, right, right, okay. um, but it's more that, um, I would say like the Debricks tool, which they, they're mm -hmm. potentially going to open source parts of it. Like yeah, they bricks have or data bricks, data, no, not data bricks, Debricks. Debricks. Thank you. <laughs> like the de brick. Yeah. We, we interviewed a mill warehouse on the chaos a couple of weeks ago. Am I spelling that anything close to right? Uh, Elizabeth Barron put it in the oh in the uh, chat. The, yeah, uh, so they they built this okay. giant model that ingests open source vulnerabilities and various categories of vulnerabilities and risks and models them to help people understand all the various types of issues <clears throat> and things to track okay. around the projects they use. And one of the things that they mention is a age of license. So I know that there are aggregator tools like that that have this as a piece of it but i haven't seen a lot that it's its own thing versus being part of a bigger tool okay so so this addresses many kinds of dependencies and vulnerabilities yeah but it's not open sourced yet right they, they claim that it might be eventually <laughs> that doesn't sound like the way these things generally go but okay oh <laughs> um well, they, yeah, they, they said they're, they're leaning to open source in the model because they still are trying to run a business. So it's only going to be one thing. Yeah, day. of course. Yeah, no, I sort of get that. Um, I do get it. I mean, and, and once you have a tool and you've built the, there's a lot that goes into doing this work. So it's not like they won't have jobs if they open source it. But I mean, I think that the biggest mm -hmm. issue for them is the cost it takes to run the model. <laughs> Uh, in terms yeah. of the amount of stuff that they're reviewing constantly and as they scale, it's really cost intensive right now, at least what they had described.
So the use case, all right, so I'm typing this because it's easier for me to, so I wanted to make it in the minutes, but so what Dwayne and I are trying to do is accumulate these dependencies for as many languages as we can across some collection of repositories. So we're not thinking about this at the repository level, we're thinking about it as like if I'm an ASPO and I have a thousand repositories that I'm looking over, I would like to know how many of those, like of all those repositories, what are the five dependencies I have that are the oldest across that, that collection um, and to ask the question that way, because then I can start to think about where am I gonna direct my resources? Um, and I think anyone that's managing a product portfolio or a project portfolio in an open source company probably has some of the same questions. Like in my product line, I have these 300 repos and which of, you know, of those 300 that are, you know, where where do I have the most outdated things, or what what are the things that are most outdated across that collection? Um, so just to give you some background, and kind of like how how we're thinking about the question that we want to answer. Um, does that make sense, or did I lose you completely? Oops, I guess I'm seeing nodding. I think it makes sense. Okay. Um, I mean, I think it's a things that people should know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of it. Um, so the, other, the next thing I had on the agenda is, I mean, I think this group has done a lot of thinking about, de well, dependencies, vulnerabilities. And so I think, I think we have some things that we could contribute to either and or, or both OSPOCon and what I understand to be Open Source Summit Europe in Seattle for this year um they have the same deadline in june so oss where do we go uh in oss eu in seattle uh, the deadlines are both june 13th i think i'm wondering if they're going to do something similar to what all things open submission process they allowed you to mm -hmm. say what other conferences this talk would be appropriate for versus mm -hmm. submitting so I, I i haven't actually looked at the forms so i don't know if that's the case but i haven't either but i, I expect they're pretty similar um, yeah. then they're not asking for other conferences they are asking like select the track which is most relevant to it okay okay yeah like they have given those list of options like uh maybe community or you know different list of options so they're saying if you feel it, my talk is matching with between two or three, just pick one because reviewers are aware of it. That's what they've mentioned in that. Okay. That's good to know. So um, does, does anybody want to try to like, work, like uh, work on something I, I think Dependencies probably has a couple of flavors. Like if I go back through our notes, I think there's our discussion of these different, like it's a pretty vast space. We also have what we think are the minimum viable products, which I would insist, I would expect by fall, we would certainly have these metrics, some of these metrics developed. Um, and then this needs and motivations work, you know, um, there's just a lot, but there's a lot of context that we can put around these questions and we've, we've identified personas and developers and questions. And so I think some of this could be aggregated, like help other people sort through what is, what was even for us, I thought a, initially a, a space that offered much more possibility than clarity. And I guess, to, I guess one thought is to share the sorting work that we've done. Um, and another thought might be to share some of the work that we're doing to define minimum viable products.
these are my thoughts. Are, is anyone else interested in working on or organizing a talk from the risk group at one of these venues? I, <coughs> I can do it. I'm happy to support it. I think, okay. I feel like my inherent challenge is the bias that I'm coming in with. So I feel like oh. I wouldn't want to lead it just because I know that the issues that I deal with. Right, are different. Me. Yeah, I mean, different, I'm coming in from a different scale in history um, where maybe we have issues and things that are pressing for us that are less relevant to other kinds of companies um, or maybe just the priorities are in different places. So I'm happy to support it. I don't think I should drive it just because it's hard okay. to figure out what bias I'm coming in from. Right. And David, I imagine you're tired of giving talks like this. Uh, I actually, I love to give talks right now. I'm just tired. I have yeah. not slept. <laughs> yeah. I'm basically up for what? Since eight, nine yesterday. Oh so. man. I'm hey, surprised. Your eyes are still open. So yeah, it's, My eyes uh, are still open. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is uh, pretty yeah. amazing. I've not slept well the last two nights either, but it's, I, I'm slept a little bit. So yeah, I, I posted in the chat. I, I had a COVID oh. vaccine shot yesterday. I did oh. it. It's you know, but apparently different people react differently. And my reaction is I actually don't feel bad at all. I okay. just never slept. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so once I uh, get some sleep, I'll be fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess your that's your body's response to being having its immune system conditioned to respond. I, it's I, just, I can't I, I gotta pull an all-nighter to get this done <laughs> yeah I, I I know some other people who felt terrible and other people who didn't notice and you know I'm just telling people get it anyway <laughs> I had, yeah. I'll say I had Moderna and I was I was knocked out for 36 hours on the second shot like okay I, okay. I wasn't I, sick I, I was just I felt like I weighed 10,000 pounds like I was just like physically immobile like I just like mm -hmm. felt so heavy everything I just felt like I couldn't lift my body but I didn't feel anything else. It's just really. I, I think I like my symptoms better. I mean, yeah. sleeping's yeah. not great, but I mean, yeah. it's not like I've never pulled an all nighter before. So. No, I'm I'm sure it's not the that that's not the case. It is not my first. Okay, all right. <laughs> so usually it's voluntary. <laughs> so so okay. Um, I would I would say um, this is uh, open to all and. Um, yeah, but I would be happy to. I would be happy to pr to present all sorts of things. Although okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm always up for presenting on something if I've got something that I am hoping to worth worth saying. Yeah. Well, uh, so much of this stuff is kind of in that nascent state. I'm a little. I mean, yeah. we can talk. I can talk about what this group has done, but yeah. uh, now I, mean, I will say I would, that I would say that David, you brought the truckloads of stuff, and then <laughs> I dumped we, it on you. Yeah, and we sorted it. So it's like, um, David, truckloads. Of hey, I'm, trying to, I'm sorry, Sophie. I was Sophie. gonna say I have an idea that yeah. is may or may not be realizable by the time we give the talk. So this is the caveat. But I think what would, what would be interesting is we kind of spent a lot of the upfront time providing more of an exhaustive framework and view of things. And now we've been kind of working through how, if and how we would measure things. Um, and then I think there's always the third piece, which is what is the relative impact of measuring that thing? <laughs> so not that we can actually provide a, a view can of- you, can, you, can you give me those three again? Or so type them? <laughs> there's sort of the like, what to measure, how to measure it, and what does that measurement mean view? Um, okay. that I think it would be fascinating if we could kind of present that process with at the end saying, now that we've done that for three things, what did that actually change or could change for someone? Like, because you're able to say, if we focus on something like lib years, that you're reducing risk by finding things that are outdated, not supported or areas of investment. So it kind of like connecting that back to what you would do with it. Um, but I think because kind of the hardest part is is all the things together. I feel like it's sort of because it's such an overwhelming space 
that I think there could be value in in kind of that that progression of how to isolate something, how to actually find out how to measure it, and then how do you apply that measurement over time? And is this actually a thing you should be measuring? So if we do it very focused, then I know we can't act on it. If we want to do it more comprehensively, then I don't know if we have enough background yet. Yeah, I, 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 if somebody had pointed a gun to me and said, hey, David, you got to present on this, I, I would probably present on something I would call, I, my initial thought is I'd call it a metrics sampler. No claim that this is the full set of all metrics that you would want, but here are some metrics you might want to think about. Uh, metrics sampler, you know. So basically, you know, not trying to claim it's the best uh, or the only, but here are some, and then we don't need to make the argument why these are the best because, frankly, I'm not so sure. We have no not idea. Necessarily, yet. I would say not necessarily the best. Not necessarily. Yeah the best but as okay. long as you throw that yeah. as long as you throw away that argument right away because i don't even know how you get there you know saying hey here's some things and you might consider them that's a whole lot easier to pitch and there's material that can be used now by the way i re-added i keep mentioning you know because i'm trying to get people to talk to each other uh lfx is working on lfx insights which is more metrics uh, metricsopensf.org, um, also working on metrics. So everybody has different focuses, and of course we got the GitHub GitLab uh, stat statistics. What was it? What was it? Was it you throw this stuff out here, David? You know, it's, it's at the at number, point number five at the bottom. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay, good. All right, all right. Yeah, other groups, metrics, insights, metrics. I think we've been to the metrics OSSF site before, um, and and the, of course the at least my right now github lets me see things in a repo which is great super useful yeah. if i'm running a repo or a, a small set of repos and where, where obviously it becomes a bigger i mean the reason we build tools and we try to define these metrics is because most of us are thinking across this large collection of repositories of some shape and size um, and oh. the, GitHub, the github tools don't go far enough for that large review yeah, Not. going to the Sophia's uh, perspective on these like five points, what is it that we want to measure, how to measure, and what uh, what we take away? I feel like in this group, we are as like at this stage, what to measure the stage. I'm still feeling like yeah. we are trying to explore what to measure. How is not even started, I guess, maybe. Sean has started in the auger, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, from I think, this group perspective, I feel like we are still at what to measure. And I think I think we've defined what to measure. I, I think these MVPs are yes. what we want to define. Like these are the definitions we want to create. Yep. Um, um, so I think I think we have we got that far and how to measure it. That's those are kind of some that is some Dwayne's and my question at the beginning is really very much about how to measure it. Like, okay, as a practical matter, we want to actually do this um, because like, we have uh, one, possibly two, um, or possibly zero. We don't know yet. Um, Google Summer of Code students will be focused on building the how for this working group, um, yeah. or at least building like examples of things that we we would like that don't yet exist, um, and and. Uh, so I think we have some. We potentially will have some resources that when we you can. You say this group? Do you mean risk or risk? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I put in a couple of projects that are very focused on the things that we've been talking about because I think building like some like showing people how to measure it and then showing them the results. I mean, I, in the back, I don't think I. I know I couldn't have articulated as clearly and succinctly as you did right now, Sophia. But in the back of my head, I was kind of jumping to that when. When we, when we put those projects out there because that's this is how Dwayne and I are thinking about it. it's like okay well to know that these are the things to measure I, I kind of want to see like one like Libier against uh, some repositories that I'm familiar with and see what 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 we do or don't learn or what ways that we might like aggregate or disaggregate the data that we find to to build some kind of better understanding of the landscape that we're operating in 
Uh, yeah, and, and, and what I often say, and you may have, my apologies, you've said the same thing a thousand times, but the point of metrics is to help give you I insights know. to, to uh, make decisions. Yeah. So now different people have to make different decisions. So you wouldn't expect them all to have the same metrics, but. <laughs> that yeah yeah we, we say this over and over again and i think it takes new people new to chaos a little while to understand what we mean by the context is a squishy word it's it's not very specific but it's basically this the group of stuff that you're working with these metrics will you'll interpret them based on what you know about that collection of stuff and the people around it um i don't think context is wrong but it is awful squishy yeah would um purpose be clearer do you mean something different than purpose i guess goal question goal and questions maybe yeah well go go okay goal yeah yeah or priorities goals questions and priorities yeah, but I, I think priorities is a as a more specific way of expressing a goal. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, uh, I I agree. I think uh, when I when I actually so sometimes to figure out what your goals and priorities are, I have a bunch of questions like does like my first question is okay, Libya. If this looks really promising as a as a metric that will tell me something in a kind of an aggregated way that so I don't have to deal with all of the detail, but it'll and so if I run Libya against everything, do I get that insight? Like, does it help me make priorities? Does it help me um, see like big differences between parts of my, my world that, you know, okay, there's obviously some correction required on this dependency um, or, or this repo has a lot of old stuff. We should probably deal with that. Um, I, I will or say do I not get that? Right, I think it very much does depend on, again, your goal. Mm -hmm. I think for a developer, the just oh. the lib your count isn't enough. You know what I, tip, when I'm a developer, you know what I look, I, I drill one level down. Yeah. Sort, tell me what's oldest. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we just, we do still get from the lib years, it's just that one level down. Yeah. Whereas if I were not developing, I just want to get a sense of how bad they are. Mm -hmm. I might look at the sort or I might look at the number, but right. I'd like to have some clue about are they keeping up? Right. No, that's super. I, yes, I agree. Um, okay. Uh, we have okay, we're 30 minutes after. These are some really great ideas and we have some time and we have like five, I guess four, four, four. I mean, I think these are four ways of possibly shaping and shuffling different ideas um but maybe uh as a action item i can take and maybe vinod you want to join me um can maybe uh would you maybe you and i can arrive at a sort of a set of two or three paragraphs to orient specific talks yeah um okay I am planning to submit a metrics related talk, but I don't think it'll touch on dependencies at all. So it shouldn't and be anything related. If, if it does, we're not territorial about it. <laughs> so, you know, if you give a talk, that's a good thing. Um, I'm just looking at my proposal. I haven't submitted it yet, but it doesn't even have the word dependency in it. It's more about just all the messiness related to this data. Um, oh, yeah. That's another problem. So yeah, it is. Well, I'm, I'm coming to your talk. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that going to be an OSPOCON or open source summit um, here in Seattle? Oh, I, I was. I feel like I probably would just do it for OSSU versus OSPOCON. Yeah. Um, but the the I really bad at titles, but I'm calling it a beginner's guide to open source analytics. I also proposed it to ATO, Ooh. but basically just like. I'm an analyst. I started working with open source data maybe about a year ago. And here's all the weirdness that I found. You can't just treat this like any other operational data. There's a lot of funkiness. Like I'm working with a data set right now that has three different versions and none of them agree. 
course, yeah. it's coming from the same place. Why is that the case? Many uh, people. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, what do you do? You kind of just like have to acknowledge that it's there and work around it. But yeah. Hey, hey Sophia, a quick suggestion. Um, don't call it open source data. For a lot of folks, that means data that's available to the public, mm. uh, yes. possibly open, for a fee. Open source software data. Open, open source, source software. software data or something like that. Because yeah. otherwise, it gets confusing as I'll get out. Because, yeah, open data is part of this yeah. well, larger open, open production. Open source metrics. Do you think that helps clarify? Oh. I'm sorry? Open, open source, source metrics. metrics. No, I've been at I've been at a conference. I thought they were going to talk about open source software, and it was all about uh, buying data sources available to the public. No, you know, news, <laughs> newspaper clippings, and okay, yeah. So that that phrase, open source data, has a meaning other than open source software. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. that's great feedback. Thanks, because I also had a section in there on just sort of the ethical implications of using this data, which is <laughs> like assuming that it's open source does not imply just kind of public for use. Um, but that's that's still in this segment versus talking about something totally different. So are, are you talking about like the ident like identification, that sort of thing? That yeah. and just sort of the the reuse of it where do you have your sort of platform agreement of how say GitHub is collecting using your information, but that's kind of where, it, where the policy stops. Um, mm -hmm. So depending on how you extract that information, how you use it, and essentially it's kind of a call to action to what we did as a chaos project to develop more of an explicit guide around data handling policies mm -hmm. around how we treat your information because a lot of projects don't do that. Um, and so I think it's more just to point out the ambiguity that this is not stated anywhere and that just because there isn't a policy doesn't mean there shouldn't be um we're not talking about risk anymore so i i want to no but but i mean <laughs> i just wanted to give you credit for ringing my ethics bell for the third week in a row like i thought maybe i'd get through a week without having the but the yeah the ethics around the use of this data is a it's not well enough reasoned about as is often yeah. the case. I mean, my, my real world experiences is using this kind of data at Google. We just treat it all like user data, even though it's not. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then we're basically handling it with a certain level of privacy and security because they're treating it like user data. Yeah. Uh, which means that a lot of the things that I pull, I can't publish without a lot of de-anonymization and an review process because of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I understand that completely. Um, so, all right, we've got some great talk ideas. We did a great talk about ethics. Third week in a row, I have because we've all one of those. Um, far less talk, intense than the other need, two. Uh, uh, Sean, for the talk, we need uh, just an uh, abstract for the talk. Or? So I think I think our goal for the next meeting, Vinod, is just one paragraph, like just to, to essentially like just flesh out, or maybe yep. it's an outline, but just to flesh out yep. some either pieces, either one of these ideas as they are, or pieces that we reinterpret in different ways from just like. If we each give it like an hour, I think we can reason through this um, between now and over the next two weeks. I, I think we can find the time. Um, so we have 13 minutes left. And um, yeah, so Yash is new. He hasn't been to this working group before, but I've been in four other working groups where he's presented this. Um, and so I'm going to brief this discussion by saying that our ideas are that we would have a sh basically each repository inside of chaos would have a contributing document and a code of conduct document but that those two documents would point to a standard chaos document for each of those two things and then the readme could potentially be different for each working group but we'd like it to follow a common structure and this is the structure um, so uh, this is the structure so if I, effectively i don't think we'd be removing any content from our review we would just be sort of following a, a an established structure um, for the readme so essentially all the goal would be to have all chaos repos have readmes that follow some common structure i don't think anyone wants to fight me over that no, I think it's a good thing. Okay. Yash, did you want to say anything else about it? No, no. Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. And I'm, so, I'm sorry. I sort of like 
we've had long conversations in a few working groups about this. And so it's like, I just didn't want to go down that road again because my own experience with it. I thought I could summarize it more effectively than just, you know, repeating the conversation. So that's what I did. Um, so in the, in the time, in the 10 minutes or so we have left, um, David, this is just notes from our earlier discussion, right? This other groups that provide some OSS metrics. Yeah, this just this was, there, you didn't just, mean just it, FYI, you know, just please be aware that other groups are also looking at metrics for open source software and right here's some examples. That that's I'm trying perfect. to make sure that people know about each other and because I'm concerned everybody's just running off and having no clue. So no, that's I I appreciate that. I just want to make sure it wasn't also an additional agenda item. Um so we had some metrics that um, we were working out. Um, so, okay. Look, apparently we'd had some discussion about uh, the dependency session at OSPOCON last time. So I'll just like carry up here, tab over. Um, Add that to the notes. Um, what I recalled from the last meeting, uh, Matt proposed that we should have uh, a panel discussion. Panel, yes, rather than a talk. I think there's, I think there's still talks. Um, uh, Aspo, okay. All right, and you know, I think, I think, I think the last meeting was maybe the one where I don't know. I was there was some home discombobulation, so I maybe missed this. Um, Yeah, these are all really good points. I, I don't think a panel is, is a bad idea or wrong um, but at all. Uh, but I, th I also think we have a lot that we've muddled through that can be shared. And uh, I don't necessarily think that like the demuddling, the muddling and the demuddling that we did is something that it, I think would be helpful to a lot of people if we just shared that yeah. um and some of the other ideas i think are really strong as well so uh um you know idea for this whole kind i feel like I, I like the idea of a panel to talk about the user and usage pieces mm -hmm. so all of the the squishy context yeah <laughs> it's interesting to hear <clears throat> like i'm thinking about when some folks from sustain showed up and talked about what they were interested in and had this whole perspective on funding that we weren't really considering because that's their perspective, that's their objective. And so hearing, I think that's where the panel shines is that you have people from different backgrounds that can show you how these things mean very different things to different people. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think a regular presentation is better suited to establish this is the framework or this is how we try to organize this hairy mass of tangled ideas um so that hopefully you have some more to start with or maybe you throw it out and start again but like i think it's it can be a hard discussion to begin right i i yeah that's a really good way of like i've never heard anybody put it quite that well actually um so and i think david's proposed to talk somewhere in the middle of that the the sampler is, is kind of like somewhere in between a panel and a uh, defined talk. It's like a explicitly undefined, perhaps inviting discussion at the end. Can you have slides in a panel? Sure. Yeah. I often do. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, it depends on what you do, but a lot of panels I've seen and I've participated in, you know, like you have like three panelists, each one has five minutes, they give a five minute talk. Then they sit down and then we have a discussion. It's, it's a way to present some quick information in a hurry yeah. to kind of set the stage. Yeah, giving people some sort of framework for where each panelist is coming from right. and then putting them in the in the mosh pit and letting them fight it out. That's right. And, you know, and if there's controversy, all the better. Yeah, I mean, it's... I see you got Sophia. You got her. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a... I mean, people, I'm a very friendly panelist. I've never thought anyone under the bus. No, me, me neither. I, I, 
I've seen it happen a couple of times. It's actually sort of ugly, but <laughs> there, there, are things, there are things that people are more or less impassioned about. Let's put it that way. Um, I, just, I, I have seen them what done well too. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say, I've been on one where this one poor guy just really didn't interject well. And I just felt bad because of the, the rest of the three people were very comfortable just jumping in and sharing things. And he just sat there and didn't say anything the whole time. So I just feel like it's also a, if you don't have a level of rapport with people and you're not comfortable just yeah. out and out, it doesn't work so well. Yeah, I, I think controversy can work well, but it's challenging. And yeah. usually there's a controversy because people have different priorities. It's not really the facts are different. It's that, you know, yeah. I, you know A is more important to my community and B is more important to my community. The, the panels that I've seen that have been well done have a good facilitator somebody who can mediate between the panelists in some cases or between audience questions and the panelists and you know like there's somebody whose job isn't really necessarily to state an opinion but more sort of like ask the person sitting there and not speaking <laughs> what their thoughts about it are <laughs> you know because the other two panelists are probably just so engaged in their own perspectives that they didn't even notice until after the talk that the third person never said a word you know, because when you're up there in, in the spotlight, you're like, you're not that it's helpful. I think it's helpful to have a facilitator. Um, so, and oh, see, yeah, there's always dev stats. Is that still one person or have they expanded that team? It's one dude. <laughs> <laughs> but you can submit issues on the. Yeah. You know, okay. just he might not look at them because it's just one guy. Yeah, no. It's but there, I have a theory that that's going to change though because of the announcement that the, the, the CNCF hired a research person or is that Linux hired a research person? I like don't a know. Research. Well, okay. Um, the Linux Foundation has hired a research person. Uh, her name's Hillary. And I know that we're also bringing in somebody else who is specifically... I'm told has uh, some background in DevOps and metrics and measurement, uh, but that's not public yet. So I can't identify the person. Is his name Bill? I can't identify. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for the recording to turn off, Sean. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I still won't be able to, cause yeah. it's, it's uh, hiring and stuff. That's well, not, and I, I that was, is not kosher to, to do well, that. I was also making a very, very obtuse allusion to Bill and Hillary. So, oh, um, I. It, <laughs> it, it Sleepless so day far. went so far. Yeah. Oh, it, it sailed so far above my head. It's several floors over. <laughs> that was a sleep. That was my sleep deprivation effects test, Dave. And uh, well, I, to, I, I, I passed. I, I'm I sleep deprived. <laughs> you're clearly really sleep deprived. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe now I'm conflating the two things. So I remember, so Linux hired someone, but then the, the CNCF, I don't know. If you saw there was kind of a a noisy post going around about their I'm gonna survey stop in, like inaccuracies. I'm gonna stop the recording. Um, 